So you have comments, do you? Guess what? I have comments on your comments. I'm Chris Cuomo here at the Chris Cuomo Project with Greg Ott, and this is a fan favorite. You love to hear what other people who listen and watch seem to think and what I think about they th what they think. So <laughs> let's get after it. So we've got a lot of YouTube comments. I'm going to fire those off right now. Uh, this is from your interview with Brian Tyler Cohen. SM Post writes, why is Chris being such an apologist for Trump? Not true. Not true. It's about fairness. Okay? You guys have to stop confusing what Trump is with what the people who look to him as an agent of their animus. There's a difference. I don't disagree with most harsh appraisals of Trump, okay? Personally. Personally, I think it's pretty easy to paint him in a negative light. I think he helps a lot with that analysis. But that doesn't mean that all the people who want to vote for him or support him or like him, they are desperate to change a system. They want disruption. They want different policies. They've been made to be afraid and that he will protect them from those who want to hurt them. And when looking for a heavy to fight against somebody, you're not always going to pick a person who's like of the highest moral character. Some would say that may be a disadvantage if you're going to get into a street fight. So that's all I'm doing. I'm certainly not an apologist for Trump. That's for damn sure. I am just a proponent of fairness. From that same interview with Brian Tyler Cohen, all caps, Stanthony Productions writes, really trying to capitalize off of playing both sides of the fence, huh? <laughs> Listen. That's the job, jackass. <laughs> you just want what your side of the fence is about to be the only truth, and everything else has to be bad and wrong. You're not a critical thinker. You've got to be open to disagreement. You have to be open to the ideas that you don't accept. One, it'll sharpen steel, sharpen steel. And two, maybe you'll realize some connective tissue or at least believe that you don't have to hate people who are different. And I've always done the job this way. There was more of a muscularity to my criticism of Trump and the right and what became MAGA because it was needed in its formation. Now the division is so real, there's no reason for me to play to it. I want to try to get us less divided. And I believe conversation is the cure. And there's a difference between debate and conversation. Debate is where I'm picking everything I can out of what you say to prove that you're wrong about it, as opposed to conversation where I'm looking for common ground. That's what I'm doing. It's not about getting ratings. If I wanted ratings or clicks or whatever the fuck the metric is, I'd pick a side. Duh. From your interview with Brian Tyler Cohen, user-KB8NR6TB1K, it rolls right off the tongue, asks, what's your problem with AOC? Um, I don't have a problem with AOC. I, I think that... <sighs> I think that you just have to be straight about what she is. Uh, she is uh, often an exaggerated uh, form of uh, progressive politics without a lot of uh, intelligent backstop for it. I think she overextends positions. Uh, I think that she is more popularity than she is depth in terms of the policy she's been able to engineer. And I don't believe that she represents the Democratic Party at its best, which is trying to draw in a big tent. I think she's very us and them. And she's a defund the police. It's time for brown and down with white, which engenders white fright. I just think that she's divisive, really, is the basic answer. And I think we need unifiers in elected office. And she's not one. And she's also a coward. Uh, in that she only chooses friendly places for interviews. And she doesn't do interviews. I'm not saying she's got to go on Fox or Newsmax, but she should definitely be on News Nation. Uh, she barely even goes on CNN. She'd just rather go on social media and not be tested. Leaders should be tested. This is from Yvonne Campbell, 3,283, from your reaction to the Trump guilty verdict. Sorry, I don't agree with your analysis. Working class people are convicted on less and go to jail. He is not above the law and his position in society is never going to be okay to give him a pass on justice because of politics, period. There will be a jail cell with his name and number 45 on it. The bullying and cowering from confronted this evil individual has to stop. Okay. We disagree. 
And that's okay. You see it differently. Uh, I believe that no one is above the law. I don't believe that justice is blind either. And there is prosecutorial discretion. And different people in different, different circumstances that represent different policy interests get different treatment. They don't bring every case that they can. And I believe that going after a former president for a low rent misdemeanor that you forced into a felony did more harm than good. And I don't think he's going away. So I don't think you're going to get the satisfaction that you pray for, but we'll see. But I don't hate you or disparage you or insult you because we disagree. That's fine. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. We'll see. This is from your interview with Jillian Michaels. Kestrel Media writes, I am also a gay woman and have been an athlete all my life. If it were not for earning a scholarship to college through sports, I would not have been able to afford college. Jillian is 100% right on this and inciting actual facts and science is proving to be able to say the truth without emotional histrionic bullshit. If a man wants to join the world of a woman and be considered as such, then stand firmly with women on the fact and not just what works with the trans community. Women fought so hard on their rights, and while I support people living their lives, it is absolutely critical to consider not only your wants and needs, but also those of the women you are joining. This is common sense, but alas, it is not so common. And then some sort of emoji. Look, I get it. I get where you're coming from. I think it's a little bit more complicated than that because if you're going to legally respect these people changing from one gender to another, how much will you restrict their rights as a member of that gender? That's what we got to figure out. And look, I think the reason that we're fixating on sports is because it's a no brainer, right? When the woman looks like me and is competing against people who are five, six, 140 pounds in wrestling or whatever, swimming or whatever it is, it's easy to say, well, this isn't fair. But you got to be careful about what you enforce as a standard because then it's going to be into access to female services and, you know, different classifications. And you're going to have to figure it out. And it's going to be tricky for a while. And you have to just make sure that you're acting on law and reason and what makes the most sense for the most people. And that sometimes gets hard and gets tricky. And sometimes you're going to get it wrong in some cases and right in others, at least initially. But sports is an easy application of it. Now, <clears throat> that said, I'm fighting my own point, right? Well, if it's an easy application and whenever the woman, so then when is a woman a woman? I don't know. We got to figure out a standard. <sighs> because, you know, you can make the argument that once you've gone through puberty or even before that, you just have a natural advantage physically. That's always going to be manifest. And should those female athletes be able to compete against other female athletes, non-transgender female athletes? And then you could say, well, uh, the tallest girl is also always going to be an advantage in, in um, swimming. And so why don't we outlaw uh, height? Well, there's a difference between things that are natural and things that are manipulated. And I think that's going to be reflected in the tolerance of the di differences. So I think it's tricky. But it seems simple when it comes to sports because you should let females not be burdened by trans females who dominate the playing field. I get it. But you have to be careful because you got to figure out how you respect everybody. And it's not easy, as, as we see. From that same episode, Rubes underscore and underscore Lori writes, inclusion excludes women. Inclusion excludes women. Inclusion of trans women excludes other women. Well, it depends. I mean, either they're all women or they're not all women. And if they're not all women seen the same way, then what is the standard? And I think that's what we have to figure out. You know, different agencies had come up with a different hormone replacement credential where you got to be on hormone replacement or whatever for a certain amount of time. And I don't know that that satisfies the complaints or the requirements of what makes it an even playing field. I think we got to figure it out. And I also think that the answer is, yeah, the answer is don't have any trans women in sports. I don't think that's going to be acceptable legally uh, or to the majority. Support for the Chris Cuomo Project comes from Cozy Earth. Cozy Earth, I love it. Why? It helps make your house a home. Isn't that one of the things that we really want once we get home after all the crazy is to get cozy? I love the sheets, especially the bamboo sheet set, okay? 100% premium viscose bamboo, breathable, uniquely soft. It's softer with every wash and they don't crush the environment. I love the sleepwear also. 
gotta be honest. It's loose where you need it to be, and it's warm, and it's easy, and it washes well. I dig it. But the sheets are one of one. And that they're using bamboo is huge for me because I care. I care about what my money is doing to help with the problems that face all of us. So, your peace of mind matters. Make a wise choice this election season, or at least one of them. Embrace the comfort of Cozy Earth and feel the difference. Go to CozyEarth.com slash Chris, use the code Chris, and you'll get an exclusive discount of up to 40% off. I mean, you can't lose. If you get a post-purchase survey, say you heard about Cozy Earth, from the Chris Cuomo Project, please. Support for the Chris Cuomo Project comes from ReadyWise. The Latin phrase is semper preparandum. You have to be ready, always, especially today. Everything happens so fast. Everything can change in an instant. So don't wait for the unexpected to then try to prepare. That's where ReadyWise comes in. They have meals, a wide range of freeze-dried meals, tasty breakfasts, hearty pasta dishes, all with an impressive 25-year shelf life, okay? That means you can trust your emergency food to be just as good when you need it as it is today. Plus, ReadyWise is a proud American company committed to providing top-notch quality. Buy American is a good idea. So head over to readywise.com and use promo code CHRIS20 at checkout and you get 20% off any regular priced items. That's readywise.com promo code CHRIS20. Stay prepared, stay safe, stay fed. Hey Chris, my name is Jeff. I'm out from Pennsylvania and I enjoy watching the Chris Cuomo Project. I have a question for you. I suffer from severe scoliosis, so I receive Social Security Disability. And my question is, I am concerned that if the Republicans get in office, they want to privatize and cut benefits. What is your take on people with severe disabilities that really can't find meaningful work? I'd appreciate your insight on that. If maybe you could answer some questions on what might happen if Donald Trump wins, will people be reevaluated and possibly lose benefits or have a reduction in them? Thanks for taking the question, and I hope that maybe it appears in the show. Thanks a lot, Chris. I love watching the project. See you later. Well, look, I mean, it's easy to say if Trump gets in, they're going to cut because that's what the conservatives want, but he didn't do it the last time. Right. I mean, he passed multiple bloated budgets uh, that caused a ton of extra borrowing. He ballooned the deficit way more than Biden has. Why? Because he's not a real fiscal conservative. It's, it's not what he is. They just shut up about him because they're afraid of him because he'll beat him in the primaries. So, <clears throat> first of all, I'm sorry for what you're dealing with. Um, although, who knows? Maybe it's made you who you are and that you're better for it. Um, so maybe it shouldn't be about sorry, um, but I appreciate your question. And uh, look, you have to take care of the people who need it. The issue is how much bureaucracy does that take? What level of benefit is that? Uh, and every time there are cuts, you want to make sure that they're tailored towards the servicing part and not the services part. But that's not always easy. So every time you hear cut, people who need services are going to be nervous. I get it. That's why government is so easy, is so quick to talk about it and so slow to do it. This is a, a big fan. I love uh, your middle of the road understanding of the game, the political game. When COVID was discussed with either Bill Riley or recently with David Rubin, your point to Ruben was one point was that it wasn't just in the U.S. It was very much in the world too. Anyway, how the world was was fighting COVID was that it was unknown. Trump and Biden both were presented with a crisis that we didn't know much about at that time. Precaution was needed, and the original belief was that it was transmitted via the air. Remember the sneezing and the can't touch the papers on the desk and stuff like that. So masks were stressed, of course. And by the way, isn't that worldwide situation the same thing with inflation? It's not just this country. 
And it's the same thing with the migration on the southern border. It's happening all over the world. Anyway, that's what I have comment. Bye. Well, everything is more and more global now. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, I disagree with some of the points of the analysis, but the macro, I agree. Um, <clears throat> it was new. People forget the novel part of the novel coronavirus, which is what it was, uh, and all the death and all the fear and all the panic. That's where the shutdowns came from. That's where the mandates came from. Uh, that's where the speed of the vaccine came from was need, emergency. And we were the envy of the world in terms of how fast we got it done. Yes, people forget that. In the beginning, it was that you get it through um, fomites, through touching surfaces. So we were cleaning everything. And that's when Fauci said, actually, you don't want a mask because you're touching, you're going to make yourself more sick. Then they figured out that this virus was transferred aerosolized in the air, and then you did need a mask. Now, people punish them for that change, and that's the difference between science and politics. When you change your position, it's seen as weakness, not in science, but in politics, certainly. Uh, inflation is, uh, yes, global, but not as much as gas prices. Gas prices really are a world market. And yes, most uh, durable goods are in a world market, but Inflation is more directly affected by our monetary policy here and what we allow in terms of our price structure on the private side here than with gas prices. Radio station. That's what you want to end on? Radio station. What do you think? You have such a warped sense of humor. <laughs> I'm interested in what you think about this. Radio station. I think it's somebody saying the words radio station. Of course it's someone saying the words radio station. Well, what's your take on that? Do well, you, well, who knows what else she was saying? We well, don't that's know. all she said. So that I'm, I can only give you what I have. Somebody hands me an, a, a piece of paper that's, you know, only got a couple words on it. You know, that's what I've got. Radio station. Uh-huh. Radio. Radio. What does he say? Name the band. Aztec Camera. Aztec Camera, yeah. Isn't that a camera store? I'm on a Mexican radio. Down, 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 down. I'm on a Mexican, whoa, radio. Do you know that song? Uh, no. Hold on, I'll play it for you. Okay, well, don't do that because we'll get flagged on you. They're going to demonetize this video. Do not play it. Shit. Do not play it, but we'll we'll assume we know who this the musician ding, is. Ding, 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 ding. I'm listening to the new Washed Out album right now. That's That's what I'm enjoying. Yeah, is this the song? Because they're gonna they're gonna turn this. You're not gonna no. make any money on this if you play this for more than five seconds. All our hard work will go down the drain, from a monetary perspective, at least. Hi, Chris and Greg Ott. This is Laura in Raleigh, North Carolina. Chris, I initially checked out your podcast because I enjoyed you on CNN and just wanted to see what you were up to afterwards. And I've listened to every episode since. Between working full time and having a lot to do outside of work, I don't always keep up with the going on in the world like I want to, and have found your shows, keep me up to date on things, and I learn a lot as well while I'm driving or taking care of things at home or whatever, so it's been good for me. I also want to say I love Greg Ott and the sidekick banter between you two. I am always laughing when the two of you get going on sandwiches or the Amish or whatever the topic might be. I love the lighthearted injection of humor because we have to laugh. We just have to so keep up the good work and many well wishes to you both and to Greg Ott soon to be factor. Take care. We have to laugh. See, I give I, those radio station clips or radio, whatever she said. That's what the people want. <laughs> okay. I'm giving you, I'm giving you what you want. First of all, I like how fast she was talking. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you're, you're in a hurry. I put, it's I, not I Aztec. play back the calls for Chris at like 1.5 speed, but we, in the production, they're one speed. It's not Aztec camera. It's wall of voodoo. Mm -hmm. I'm on a Mexican radio. Listen, I love that you love the byplay. That's why we do it. I, I do play. believe that there is, that's what it's called. Sure. I've, okay. This guy, this guy is not easy for me to get along with. I got to tell you that I do it for you people. I want you to know that. Here's the thing. If we can make it easier with some fun so that not everything is so serious. You know, we, we take serious things seriously. We don't take ourselves doing it seriously. It's like the Joker in the Batman. That's exactly Why it. so serious? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he laughs at his own jokes a lot. No, it's, What was it's the name of the original Joker? The Batman. What? What, what? did you say? The original what Joker? What was the name of the original Joker in Batman? 
I don't Caesar know. Romero. Yeah, Caesar Romero. People say I have hair like him. So Caesar uh, salad was invented on the 4th of July. Do you think he's on drugs? Look it up. I'm the, why actually, would I make this? Not. Why would I make up a fact but, I mean, like that? Where did that come from? The, the, I, the Caesar salad was invented on the 4th of July. Why do they call it Caesar salad? Because the man's name was Caesar. Oh, it's not after Caesar like Julius? No, it's a guy who owned a restaurant out west named Caesar. Really? Yeah. So instead of eating your apple pie and wolfing on all those hot dogs, have, have salad some anchovies. For once. Yeah, have some, have, have have some, some anchovies. Some warm anchovies. Have <laughs> some warm anchovies in the summer. Yeah, have some egg and oil. Like, it's great. <laughs> What's better than raw eggs <laughs> on a sunny day? Dead Look, I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, if you can learn something, if you can have some food for thought of your own ideas, like, it's totally acceptable to me if you reject where I'm coming from, but the analysis helps you fill in where you want to be coming from. That's totally acceptable to me. This is not about indoctrination. It's just uh, about the power of suggestion and to help you get to a better place. And if the levity helps, that's why we do it. And it's also uh, just a fun job. Cesar Cardini uh, invented the salad. He moved from California to Tijuana to avoid prohibition. And he's uh, believed to have invented it uh, on July 4th, 1924. What is that, 100 years old? Is this the 100th anniversary of the Caesar salad? Wow. Nine, this is the 100th anniversary of the Caesar salad. Wow. That's a big deal. I may have one. <laughs> I mean. Do look, you have Caesar salads? Not on me. <laughs> do you eat them on a regular basis? <laughs> they're okay. My wife likes them. He, they're fine. He almost they're, killed Amherst with that joke, <laughs> there, there by aren't, the way. There, aren't enough, there isn't enough going on in a Caesar salad. Apparently, he, like, improvised these ingredients. This is all the shit he had lying around. I, I usually, That's where they say a sandwich came from also. Yeah. The Earl of Sandwich. Yeah, they just, yeah, put it on some bread. That makes sense. This is just like, you think of a Caesar salad, it's just like, you know, some romaine and, you know, But the where dress. did he get the raw egg and the anchovies to go with cheese and, and salad? Well, this is some SEO-optimized text from a restaurant. So I don't know how I reputable never, this source is. I would have never thought to combine those things. I mean, anchovies, salted anchovies and salad, I don't think I would have gone there. Raw egg? Um, with uh, cheese, I, I I don't know unless I was going to cook it that I would have gone there. Originally intended as finger food, the original recipe called for whole lettuce leaves, which were to be dipped in the dressing and then eaten with the fingers. With the fingers. With the fingers. So you're supposed to be like reaching into that bowl, table side. Hmm. Again, this is from a... That's why yeah. originally the Caesar salad, they used romaine lettuce because those are very thick and stiff pieces. Yeah. Not unlike an endive. Or endive, where I come from. <laughs> That's good with what? Blue cheese and uh, walnuts? And, really, um, anything. Yeah, I mean, anything, really. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't work on an endive, it's because it just doesn't work. Well, let's You end... could have spaghetti on an endive. Would you? No. I said you could. <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> anyway, uh, happy happy birthday to the Caesar salad. Yeah, that's a, that was great. That was an organic thing that we just came up with. Yeah, this is great content. I mean, that's why you got to watch. Appreciate the comments. Please keep them coming. Thank you for subscribing and following. If you want it ad-free, go to the Substack. Five bucks a month, you get it ad-free, and you get it first. And you get everything I'm doing and what I've learned about long COVID and what I'm doing for my health and wellness regimen. All right there, all for the same five bucks a month. And if you have questions, go to the Manect app, and you can ask them to me directly. I'll get back to you same day. Want to watch me? Great. News Nation, 8p, 11p, every weekday night. See you there. My brothers and sisters, let's get after it.